Welcome to What's Up, Bolts. I'm Fernando Ramirez. If that's my name, then that guy, that cowboy wearing, cowboy hat wearing, sunglass dawning, son of a gun must be Dan and Dago. Woo! The arch of of Hilberto. <laughs> that's right. I'm his arch nemesis. I'm his kryptonite. I'm it all. Do not worry. Do not fret. That scumbag will never keep me down. He's going to say 20 seconds in without, and you guys can make it without talking about me. That's how much we care about I don't you. care. I don't care. Exactly. I don't care. He can KMA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, guys, big week coming up. The LA, huge, Chargers, huge. <laughs> the LA Chargers face off against the Kansas City Chiefs, a division, uh, division rival. This game probably would have been, I mean, it's huge. It's big. It would have probably been even bigger if the Chargers could have beat uh, San Francisco last weekend because yeah. that was one game away from uh, facing Kansas City. But, hey, the division is still there for the Chargers. If they can get the win this weekend against Kansas City, you're right there. You're one game behind Kansas City. And Kansas City still has to play Miami. They still have to play, uh, I believe, Cincinnati. And they still have to play some tough teams. So it's it's uh, it's still there. Uh, and, and, obviously, you get a divisional win. I think they would be three and – three and one in the division if they got this victory uh on sunday so definitely a big uh it's a big get um guys i'm not even gonna I, we're a minute and 30 in and i haven't even announced who's gonna be on the show today nate taylor of the athletic our boy shout out, shout he out. Told me last time hey dude it's a thursday night game for week two i'm not gonna be able to make it short week you know my dude my my, my dude over here he's He's big time. He wears the sunglasses. Like, you know what? I may not have too much time. But uh, but Nate was able to take the sunglasses off for this week and join us. So I'm excited for you guys to hear great conversation. We went a bit a little bit longer than I had ho- than uh, I had thought, but it was just that's how good the conversation was. Breaking down all things Chiefs, all things Chargers, a lot of fun. Uh, so definitely a good one. But uh, Dan, let's start off with uh, <coughs> with. Uh, Obviously, this game is uh, pretty big this week, but obviously, I'm not gonna. This week, there is no, uh, there's no Dan reviewing film. Unfortunately, um, I know, I know, I know. People are sad. They're probably thinking, they're probably thinking this about me right now. This guy sucks. <laughs> but uh, I, I, hopefully, they're starting to love offensive pl- offensive line play as much as I do, dude. That's all I watch now. Just offensive linemen, see how they're doing. Speaking of offensive line, there's a guy that obviously I, I'm sure Dan's going to want to shout out. Uh, not a lot has been said about him ever since uh, we, he took over for left tackle in week two um, for for Rashawn Slater, but that's uh, Jamari Sawyer. So far, these are his stats, Dan, on NFL Rookie Watch. 297 pass blocking snaps, zero sacks allowed. PFF's highest rate graded rookie pass blocker incredible we you know what we call that for now we call that a dog he's amped oh i i just love it i'm getting fired up just thinking about it i i just think the football god said you know what here's one for you here's a gem in the late rounds you haven't had one probably forever here's a gem for you you take that dan and dago which i will take that because honestly in my opinion if uh one net like obviously thinking in the future right thinking out loud Sean Slater's healthy next year, you know, can this guy play right tackle? And you're going to be good to go for a, a, a good amount of years, especially mm-hmm. if you can keep that same productivity on the right side. No, and you know what's funny? And I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give Tom Telesco credit. Uh, Tom wasn't good at drafting offensive linemen when he first got yep. to the Chargers. It was a weakness for him. The Chris Watts of the world, uh, the, uh, the <laughs> other they guys, mean, right? And it just, yeah. it just didn't, it didn't go. And lately he's been very, I mean, Rashawn Slater, uh, they yep. picked, and Filer, well, who's the addition. You go and you get no, no, but I mean, even signing free agent offensive lineman was kind of hard at the beginning. Yeah, I remember, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to name any names, but like there were some names that you're like, oh wow. But now, I mean, you go out and get Corey Lindsley, who's been incredible for the Chargers. Yeah, you get Matt Filer, who's been good on that left side. You get Rashawn, you draft Rashawn Slater, then you draft uh Zion Johnson on the right guard side. I think he's only given up two or three sacks, and that's been basically it. Like, the guy's been really. I don't know, I think yeah. it's especially for a rookie. He's been especially great. for a rookie. Exactly. And then now you get Jamari Sawyer. Like, and even the Trey Pipkin ones, Trey Pipkin's uh draft selection hasn't been bad. And then the guy that they used uh last weekend, uh Foster Serrell. Yeah, yeah he, he wasn't was bad either. 
Yeah. Well, so I maybe mean, we're finally turning a corner on this. Yeah. So maybe there are some pieces that uh, that they've been getting lately, and I mean that could also be the scouting and and coaching yeah. as well. That oh they, yeah, it, they it, have it, a good it, eye. They have a good eye for this. But Jamari de- definitely deserves uh, definitely deserves a uh, a huge. I mean, obviously the season isn't over or anything, but he's been yeah. a warrior so far. You yeah. really haven't seen much from him from him in the sense of like. Oh, he let this guy go by or that. Yeah. So it's been it's well, especially been like if you can keep this up, they're going to be pretty young. Yeah, and then I'm they're just the building line. continuity and getting experience together, getting chemistry going and everything else. You know, it could be pretty. It could be pretty nasty in the future. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the thing is that <laughs> you have a veteran center in Corey Lindsley who yep. just uh, he's been like I think he's the fifth highest graded center this year. He'll probably be. He'd probably be even better if he would have played in some of the early games that he missed. But he's been a yeah, warrior. Yeah, he could tell he was missing too. Yeah, so he's been a warrior for the Chargers up front. Uh, and he's been a leader and everything. So uh, it's always interesting to talk to Corey because he always he always brings out a little nugget or two that you learn more about the offensive line. Um, I'm sure you and him would have some great conversations. Oh, uh, I'd love to, sure. yeah. Um, but he really uh, – he's an interesting guy. And, and I mean – you start off with that, then you have some of the other pieces. The Chargers don't have a bad offensive line. That's why Justin Herbert hasn't been sacked all that much. It's it's the fact that the offensive line has been very solid this year. The only thing is the run game. They haven't been able to open up the holes. They haven't been able to run the ball consistently. But um, but it'll be interesting to see how they do against Kansas City's uh, pass rush this week. And, I mean, obviously, you have Chris Jones. You have um, uh, Kalen Dunlap. You have uh, – what's it? Carlos Dunlap. Yeah, you have some yeah. pieces there. Yeah. So, definitely uh, it'll be interesting to watch. But uh, good good job by Salier, the offensive line, and and all these other guys. Dan, yeah, I wanted to show you a quick clip. Um, yep. I hope you're wearing double underwear because uh, oh I'm, sure, I'm sure this this past – some people it say that quarterback doesn't have it anymore, that he's done, that those – all Those are the same blue check mark stooges who thought Jeff Saturday would never win a game, and look at that. Look at this. Watch this play. Lyman lead the way, baby. He drops away. Look at him. Watch the other. Yeah. Oh. Dog. Did you see Dog. that? Yeah. Want another he angle? Throws, he throws across the field. You watch, see that? Wa- yeah. Watch from this angle. You're going to get even more excited. Yeah. His eyes. His eyes, I think, are on that side the whole Those- time, too. Yeah. He's looking. Oh, no. He was looking at him the whole time. But look how his eyes are downfield. Like, this, this no, is no, no. He wasn't. I think he was. I think he looked at Bandy first. Then he yeah. he went over here, looked there, and that's, then he but, DeAndre. But that's what I'm saying, though, right? Like that's that's where I think a lot of people take heat for criticizing or saying the difference between, like, say, the Justin Fields, Lamar's, and those guys from Justin. Like Justin's first instinct is not to run. Like, yeah, he feels the pocket, he climbs it, and his eyes are downfield the whole time. Like he's not even thinking about running at all. He's going to launch the football, even though he probably had a lane there. Let me ask you a question real quick. And I know, obviously, I said that we weren't going to really watch film. Can you watch yeah. Sol- right or uh, Sarah right here on the yeah. right here? Yeah. See what you see from him against Nick Bosa. Obviously, there was a chip yeah. by Kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You see how he's patient? I think that's the thing people don't understand about tackle play, right? You have got to be patient and not be afraid of the speed. When you're afraid of the speed, you're going to create a two-lane vertical go, and they can go either inside of you or they can go outside of you, right? And that's always the biggest problem because look how he waits to turn his shoulders until he's about to make contact. Because when you turn your shoulders, you make the edge that he has to go around a lot smaller, if that makes sense. Look at it from up here. Boom. Yeah, yeah. See, look, he's patient. He's patient. You know what? I just, I just saw something that's going to excite you uh, also. Yeah. Watch the left tackle, Sawyer. Watch what he does. Watch him. I love watching offensive line play. Look at that. Oh. Look at the patience. Look, you see, that's what I'm talking about. That's the punch. I just wish he would have kind of would uh when he got on the ground, he should have, you know, jumped on his ass or whatever. <laughs> make sure he doesn't touch the dang good. That's what I'm talking about. Like the most effective effective thing for an offensive lineman to stun a rusher is his punch like that's that's why like you keep uh, so the problem i have right now right is a lot of the players want to do this right chicken wings is no good fellas chicken wings is no good because this there's no power behind this this isn't your bench press you don't bench like this right here's your bench press this is the whole thing this is where all hey, your me, power me, is going to come let me from. get out of it so you can show what, what's a chicken wing chicken wings like this they want to strike like this there's no power right 
because they can hit your arms also. Right here is all where all your power is, and you're going to freaking give them a good pop right there between the breastplate. What do you think about Justin's throw, though? Oh, my God, the son of Odin. I love the son of Odin. You know what? I, I, and I, I – um, well, we'll get into more uh, when – I don't I care what any of those stooges online said. The son of Odin is the son of Odin. As soon as we get weapons around him or competent, he is going to – You know what? It. Yeah. This is what I and Nate and I kind of discussed this coming up, but I tell Nate, I'm like, Nate, I think that this could be a good thing for Justin. And he's like, What do you mean? I'm like, There's no uh Mike Williams, there's no um Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen right now. He's really developing a relationship with some of these lower guys who are obviously going to be their secondary help in a sense. Like when Mike and Keenan are back, like when Mike and Keenan yeah. are up, he's not going to be like, Oh, Michael Bandy, what does he do? Oh, no, he yeah. remembers Michael Bandy. When, yeah. uh, when with DeAndre Carter, with Joshua Palmer, he's going to be comfortable with those guys yeah. and he's going to be able to make those guys move and he's going to be able to do some stuff with those guys. So I truly believe that this is kind of a good thing for Justin, just in case. Uh, I mean, because you know, teams are going to double team Keen and teams are going to double team oh, Mike. Yeah. So you need that's why in the beginning of the season, you wouldn't see him like at the not that he wouldn't go at anybody else, but now he's going to have trust in some of these other to go to some of these other guys. So yeah. I think it might be positive. Uh, but Dan. Why put it off? Let's go now to our guy, Nate Taylor. Uh, let's see what he uh, has to tell us. Man, I told you, great conversation. Let's see uh, him. Uh, let's break down the Kansas City Chiefs with uh, Nate Taylor from The Athletic. Let's go. Folks, is it really Chargers versus Chiefs? If I don't get Nate Taylor on, who covers the Chiefs for The Athletic? No, it's not. So I had to get him on. We, he was able to move some things around. He's like, you know what, man? I'm big time. I, I'm, I'm going to help your little show out. And I'm like, all right, bro. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Nate, for joining us. And I appreciate you jumping on. It's always great to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Same, Fernando. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Happy to be here. Uh, I hope Charger fans are doing well. But yeah, it's uh, I guess it's now the important part of the season when you start having rematches in the division, um, yeah. which is funny because like, have you guys played the 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 Broncos yet? Because I don't think that the they Chiefs played the Broncos, played the Broncos on Monday night on Monday night football. You know that weird Monday night game okay. where neither one of them. Scored oh yes, and then yes. How did I forget this? Yes, yeah, overtime. Yes, at the yes. end. Overtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the week How after, Russ blessed us. With it. Nate, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna give you a recipe for this weekend. If you get exhausted <laughs> on the flight over, you have to start doing uh, high knees. High start knees. doing yeah. high knees. You know what? No, I need to give that to you for next year because you're gonna be going to Munich, according to what yes. I saw on social media. Yes. So you're gonna yes. have to do while everybody else is asleep on the flight. Do high knees. Start doing workouts. Make sure you stay loose. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what a what a year. What a year. Oh, so it's it's okay. fast it's it's fascinating, Fernando, because like you know, the Chiefs haven't played the Broncos yet, but they will have already played the Chargers yeah. twice this season. Twice. Um they, they get the they get the Broncos twice in December. So it's a little bit of a funky schedule, but that's weird. Yeah. Man. The uh the the awesomeness of another <laughs> prime time game yeah. between these two teams. <laughs> um I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to another Another uh, SoFi Stadium experience. They're not boring. I mean, all no, the games since no. since Justin, even I mean, even in the Philip Rivers era, they were all very. They all come down literally to the last, uh, mm -hmm. to either the last drive or the last two drives. So it's it's literally they've always been fascinating games to say the least. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I know the Cardinals and the 49ers are going to go play in Mexico City, and of course, anytime you mention Philip Rivers, it makes me think of that game. In Mexico City with the sloppy field and it was back and forth. Um, yeah, it's um it, it's a fun time, and I think you know the Chargers have dealt with so many injuries, Fernando, that it's like it's hard to evaluate yeah. who they are, or like, you know, I, I guess you can applaud them for still having a winning record at this point in the season, despite you know, Justin Herbert not having his normal weapons. Um, the defense has had some influx, of course, like you know, with the whole J.C. Jackson situation. Um, and so it is a bit interesting that the Chiefs are going through, like, their first real legitimate wave of injuries at one position. It just happens to be wide receiver <laughs> between Juju Smith-Schuster being in the concussion protocol, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantlin having an illness. He didn't practice on Wednesday. And, yeah, now all of a sudden 
Um, you know, what's going to happen with McCole Hartman, who missed last week game with an abdominal injury, um, and he didn't practice on Wednesday as well. So the top three wide receivers for the Chiefs all of a sudden are in question to at least, I think, in my opinion, Juju's probably not going to play. Um, but they could go from maybe one guy not being there on Sunday night to all of a sudden their top three receivers not being available, which is, you know, which might, you know, please some Chargers fan because, you know, it feels like every game they go into it with a significant two or three guys not available. Yeah. I, I hope you bring your cleats and your gloves because Andy Reid may ask you to uh, to play receiver on Sunday if uh, if some of he these guys want, can't he go. Doesn't want to, he doesn't want to see these routes. Oh, God, no. Uh, <laughs> like if I got if I got jammed at the line of scrimmage, yeah, my route's over. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to run anymore. Yep, he jammed you're, you're like, me. I'm you're, sorry, coach. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm not trying to throw shade or anything. People would think of shade. It's not. When Randy used to get jammed at the line, Randy Moss would be like, "All right, I'm done. Like, either you're gonna yep. let me. He's gonna, yeah, exactly. Just let me go, or I ain't gonna go. So, uh, yeah. but you know, you, you bring up that point, and I mean, Patrick still did well, even when those guys all went down on on Sunday. Uh, it seems like he's he's kind of hit a new level this year. I mean, I know that obviously no Tyree Kill. Tyreek's doing well over with Miami, but it still feels yep. like it's still the same well-oiled machine. They're moving the ball. Travis Kelsey's still playing at a high level. Just can you talk about the maturation that you've seen from, from Patrick this year? Yeah, and, and the trade really forced that. You know, I've written about it in The Athletic, but, you know, he's now had to reach, like you said, sort of a newer level in terms of making decisions, um, spreading the ball around. That's probably been um, his biggest statistical growth. And he sort of mentioned it at times like, hey, last year, because Tyreek is so amazing, I would just try to get him the ball all the time. And, of course, if the defense knows that, then you might be missing somebody that's open on the other side of the field yeah. or maybe checking it down to a running back. Um, he completed nine he, – he completed a pass, Fernando, to nine different receivers on Sunday. And I just felt really – bad for the Jaguars who were just yeah. they didn't know where the ball was going it, it's hard to <laughs> say you know like I've told you guys before like you can't blitz Mahomes but if you can't yeah. blitz him and he spreads the ball around then, then where do we who do we cover who do we double team who do we give attention to in the secondary it's really hard right I mean one week you know Justin Watson is, is scoring a touchdown against the Chargers and then you don't see him for weeks um, and then all of a sudden when Juju goes out now he's Back into the lineup, you know, catching a couple balls here and there. You know, they traded for Kadarius Toney, uh, the dynamic wide receiver that they got in a trade with the New York Giants. He scored his first NFL touchdown last week against the Jaguars because the Jaguars are like, we've never seen him in the Chiefs offense. He wasn't yeah. on the team a month ago. Um, yeah. I think Travis Kelsey is still super duper productive. I think he leads tight ends and touchdown passes or touchdown receptions, I should say. But yeah, I think, you know, if it's, you know, Jared McKinnon, who's a really talented, you know, all-around running back. If it's, you know, Sky Moore, rookie receiver. If it's Marquez Valdez-Scanlon on the occasional deep ball. Um, he's not making poor decisions, and he's just reading the defense really well, um, which is hard to do at this level. I, I just I have yeah. to remind myself all the time that, you know, Justin Herbert is being forced to maybe pass the ball to guys that he's less familiar with, or right? he hasn't developed the sort of timing and the chemistry, right. Or it's not his best guys like Mike Williams, who seems to do amazing against the chiefs, you know, but not having that route runner, that consistent guy, like in Keenan Allen, um, I can see why Justin Herbert has struggled at times. It's weird, man. Like, as you said, Juju wasn't on the field in the second half. Neither was McCall Hardman. Uh, and they still scored 27 points. And he still threw for over 300 yards. So um, because Mahomes has a little bit more experience, he's able to adapt to these situations maybe a little bit more seamlessly. Um, but it's it's wild impressive that he leads the league, I believe, in touchdown passes. Yet yeah. it's not with Tyreek Hill, who, as you mentioned, is like destroying defenses in his own right with the Dolphins. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, it's funny looking at Justin Herbert and like what you said, maybe, I mean, and I, I've told people this and people are like, oh, you're just an optimist. I'm like, no, but I really feel like maybe when Keenan and Mike come back, this could be a blessing for Justin developing 
that yeah. rapport with the other guys who are going to come in and and maybe be, hey, they're going to try yes. and take away Keenan, they're going to try and take away Mike. Maybe you go to a DeAndre Carter, uh, uh, Josh Palmer. So I just think mm-hmm. that improves you a little bit when it comes to that. But man, I used to give I used to give Mahomes a uh, I used to give Mahomes a little bit of crap because I used to think like, okay, what's going to happen if Tyreek's not there? Because last year and yeah. in years past, I noticed it. He would overthrow like a, a Nicole, uh, Nicole Hartman, but it was only mm-hmm. a little like like that ball looked like it was intended for Tyree Kill, like the speed of Tyree Kill. Right. And now I feel like he's really developing uh, the skill set. Like he throws a ball that only Juju can catch. Now, he, like, yes. it's not just uh, only a ball that can Tyreek or Travis can catch, it's a ball that yes. Juju can catch, that Hartman can catch, that Valdez Scanlon can catch. So that's where I've really been impressed with his game and the way he's taken it up this year. Yeah, and and the and the funny thing too is like it's kind of you know what he will be forced to do, I believe, on Sunday, because I still think Derwin James is is incredibly talented at taking away Travis Kelsey, yeah. or at least you know playing him man to man. So it is going to have to lead to him maybe you know having that perfect ball placement or you know pinpoint. By the way, Derwin that t- you mentioned. By the way, today we asked Derwin about him and Travis Kelsey. He's like, man, y'all are going to start with that narrative again. He's like, leave it's it alone. Hard, it's just two, two good guys going up against each other. And we're like, dude, we're the Der- media. Like, we kind of have to, like, we're looking have for storylines. Yes. Yeah, he just gets a kick out of it. But sorry for interrupting you. No, no, it's it's a it's a funny point because I, if I was there, I would tell Derwin, you're like one of the only people who can cover him one on one. Like, that's there's nobody, like, we, there's nobody else in the Nobody like, else? You can't get the other guy in the league. Kittle, Kittle last weekend, and I'm not saying that Derwin covered him the whole game. Kittle had one catch for 21 yards. Like, exactly. Like Derwin's just really good. different, <laughs> bro. You're, really... you're as you're as big as a line. You're built like a linebacker, but can cover yes. like a corner and have the vision of a safety. Like, there's yes. nobody like you. Like, so yeah. it, it's fun to watch him and and Travis. It's like Godzilla going up against King Kong. Like, that's how much fun <laughs> it is to watch those two guys go at it. Yeah, so I, I just, you know, I would trust Derwin on Travis nine times out of ten. You know, that that's as good of a matchup as you can get on the defensive side. So, yeah, so it, it's going to come down to, you know, Kadarius Tony winning on the outside maybe or, you know, them working at, you know, the Chiefs have worked a lot of different tight ends this season. They're one of the teams that really uses three tight ends to their advantage, whether that's yep. uh, Jody Fortson, who's really good in the red zone, who scored a touchdown last year against the Chargers, or someone like Noah Gray, who's a second-year player that sort of came along. Uh, he scored a touchdown last week against the Jaguars. So they're going to have to use just about everybody. And the fact that Mahomes understands that and, and is it is willing to sort of play the game that way um, is a credit to him and just Andy Reid coaching him to, like, not – like still be a gunslinger, but like don't take too many yeah. risks or, you know, you actually become more unpredictable if the defense can't just tell automatically he's going to Kelsey or he's going to Tyree. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun game. And I feel like, you know, the more I think about it, Fernando, I think this is a, you can throw everything that you have from a creativity sort of, Hey, let's, let's do some trick plays. Like let's get really, funky with it you know um i still think the chiefs struggle with austin eckler or will and he plays um i think you could do all those things like just whatever you think might work whatever element of surprise you can bring do that on the offensive side of the ball but it's so funny because like i would tell you not to do that in the second game or on the other side with the chiefs offense like i would just say like hope Joey Bosa plays. Hope Khalil Mack is awesome. And Derwin James takes away Travis Kelsey. And don't blitz. Just hang back and hope you force them to field goals. Because uh, teams have really struggled to do that outside of, like, the Buffalo Bills in the yeah. last month. The Chiefs have gotten down the field, and they usually score touchdowns. Um, the Tennessee Titans did a decent job doing that. But in the fourth quarter in overtime, Mahomes just went right down the field. Um so it's a it's a funky game plan. It's like on offense, try yeah, any and yeah, everything. Yeah. Like you're defense, gonna be able, you're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to stop them a little bit, but it's only it's gonna be lapses. You're gonna need to know yeah. when, like in the fourth quarter, you know those guys are gonna come back and they're gonna try and uh, and get the ball. That's that's exactly what hap- what's happened in every Chargers Chiefs game in a sense. The Chargers have been up at the beginning of the game, and then here come the Chiefs. You have to be able to hold that down. And uh, yes. for some reason, the Chargers haven't been able to, except for last year in week two uh, in Kansas mm-hmm. City. But 
other than that, they haven't been able to to hold that down, really. Yeah, and that was one of the games where the fourth down aggressiveness yeah. I mean, was to the Chargers' benefit, right? As much as people can criticize Brennan Staley and the idea of like maybe you should last you know, year get five of those wins, five service. of those wins were fourth quarter were because of the fourth you down decisions that he made. Exactly. Yes. So I mean, people were like picking at the Chiefs game at the end, but I'm like, that's because everybody nationally saw the game. You guys didn't right. watch earlier in the season when they were going for it and they were winning games because of it. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I would I would tell Staley, like, keep doing it, like force the Chiefs to stop you if you get four chances to get 10 yards or into the end zone. I just I trust yeah. Justin Herbert enough at this point. I know the Chargers have struggled to score. So if you give them another chance, maybe they do convert because, um, you know, you're going to have to score points. I think, yeah. you know, the Chiefs won a game where they scored 20 um, against the Titans. But that's like that's a rarity. Like you're going to need to be yeah. in the high 20s. Uh, high 30s usually to beat them um and so if you need to go for it on fourth down if you need to have like a flea flicker or you know some element of trick plays or a double pass or you know if you want to do heavy play action um throw it up see if you get one-on-one with mike williams like that's that's all fine to me you know from a schematic standpoint where you know maybe it, it does give you an advantage or two and the Chiefs secondary for as you know competent as they are they're not necessarily ball hogs um, they don't really get a lot of interceptions. So yeah. Um, so I, I would I would I would really push it if I was the Chargers offense. Um, because I just think that's the best way to beat the Chiefs, and that's still the best way to beat them, even without Tyreek Hill. Uh Trent McDuffie, how has he done since he came back from IR? Yeah, this is this is going to be like you know, another step in his rookie season. Um, it's a great question, Fernando, because I think he's one of the best rookie cornerbacks. The only problem is he's only played three games, <laughs> so yeah, he's not yeah, yeah. he's not Sauce, uh, who is yeah. just incredible that guy, on the on the Jets. That guy's nuts. Uh, that guy's nuts. Guy is guy is unbelievable. But Trent McDuffie's been really good. You know, uh, he didn't give up a reception against the Arizona Cardinals in Week One. Oh, wow. Then he pulled his left hamstring, and he was out for I think five or six weeks. Um, yeah. He had an extra week with the bye. Then he comes back against the Tennessee Titans, and look. I know the Titans beat the Broncos. They don't have quality receivers. Like, so he did well. You know, the Titans got a little funky and said, hey, why don't, you, why don't, why don't we see you cover a tight end in space? And he did that pretty well because, you know, Austin Hooper is obviously a bigger body. So he didn't give up a reception against the Titans. But last week, he got Zay Jones and Christian Kirk, which is, you know, competent, average NFL yeah. receivers. He only gave up one reception. Um, that was pivotal in the game. It led to the Jaguars' touchdown right before halftime. Um, but okay. he's smooth in his technique. Um, his footwork is pretty good. He can play zone and man coverage. The one um, issue that I had looking at him in the draft is, you know, he's he's my height. He's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, um, so we know the Chiefs like to put their corners in one-on-one situations. Again, Mike Williams scores a touchdown yeah. all the time in these scenarios. Yeah, and so, he does. So I'm just waiting for the moment where it's like, hey, that's Keenan Allen. That's a pretty big, sizable guy, you know, shifty route runner. Hey, that's Mike Williams, who's got impressive speed and, you know, very good jumping ability even for his size. So, yeah. you know, at some point in, in Sunday's game, Trent McDuffie plays primarily the outside. He's not a nickel guy. And so, you know, you can just line them up in those sort of matchups and see if you can get a mismatch. Um, McDuffie has not played anybody so far like Mike Williams and or Keenan Allen. So you hope that, you know, if you're a Chargers fan, they're available. They feel good. You know, um, but yeah, that'll be a fun test because, you know, so far it's been relatively good, but I think it's been mostly easy for him. Whereas yeah. now this is a team that can actually give him um, some pretty interesting looks. Yeah, no, Keenan and Mike, uh, they practice today, so it'll be interesting to see. They said that by Friday they should know uh, what their bodies feel. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, just a couple more. Uh, Nick Bolton is a guy who I've been really – I was impressed with last year. He made some yeah. big plays in that Chargers-Chiefs game here in, uh, at SoFi, mm -hmm. and I just think he's done such a great job uh, ever since being um, – start ever since starting for uh Steve Spagnuolo on that defense just what have you seen from him 
Yeah, I, I wrote about him in the athletic recently. Um, he's just really smart and he tackles better than most yeah. second year players at the linebacker position. And so it, it's it's weird. It's like the Chargers um can run the ball, but the problem is is that Bolton usually when he touches you, you go down and he just has like this magical ability to like tackle well in the open field, tackle well in the run game. Uh he has you know, eight tackles for loss this season. So he's shooting gaps and getting guys on the ground pretty quickly. Um, I think he's getting better in zone coverage, and he started to show that in last year's game against the Chargers. I wonder um, if he'll have some opportunities with Everett or if that'll be more, you know, with Willie Gay, the the, the outside linebacker. But he plays well in dime. Um, he is the signal caller, so he puts everybody where they're supposed to be in the alignments. Yeah. You know, he obviously is aware of the, of the secondary. But – um He's a really good player. He leads the team in tackles, and he's going to blow past the statistic he had last year, which he also led the team in tackles. So he wasn't a full-time starter last year, yet he led the team in tackles. And now as a full-time starter, um, he's doing it again. He's durable. Yeah. He's consistent. He's not super-duper flashy. He's yeah. just a very good football player. Blue-collar guy. We like those kinds of guys. Uh, Nate, uh, yep. two more questions. Uh, and, again, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, um, have have they missed Tyron Matthew? Ooh, that's something I haven't thought about in a while because I want to say Tyron misses the Chiefs. Um, oh, he has yeah. not, <laughs> yeah. he has not yeah. played well. He hasn't played Man, as well I as told, I thought I he told, would. I told Gord in the offseason, if you want to pull the ultimate heel move, and hit the Chiefs in the back of the chair, uh, in the back with a chair, steel chair, WWE style. Like, <laughs> that's my that's my gig. You go to the Chargers and you say, hey, let me play with Derwin James, opposite mm. Derwin James. That would have been a lot of fun to see. But obviously, yeah. he, he went back home in New Orleans and everything. But yeah. I just, I wonder if they, I know Justin Reed's played well for them, but I wonder mm -hmm. if uh, if the defenses maybe miss what Tyron used to be able to do for them. Yeah, because Tyron was a playmaker who, who did create turnovers. And that's the one thing that I think is really lacking with the secondary or the safety position in general. Um, Juan Thornhill and Justin Reed are just, hey, solid. Don't know, let don't let anybody get behind you. Or if there is a big play, they do at least tackle. So it's not like they're taking poor angles and all of a sudden one broken tackle leads to like a 50-yard touchdown. Um, I do think that the Chiefs missed some of his versatility, um, but they felt like they got a younger version in Justin Reed. That hasn't totally held up but Justin Reed has been you know he's a fifth year player who was also very good at tackling um he does a decent job at covering so like there's going to be one-on-one -on -one opportunities and he's done I think a fine job um in that department but the cornerbacks like it's weird like you know what the Chiefs run yeah they just run it very well very just like yeah. not great just just well enough to like help the offense obviously win games so they're going to play a lot of man coverage. There'll be a little bit of zone. Sometimes one safety's up and one's back. You know, sometimes they obviously have two deep. Um, it's a bit of a simplified version of defense, um, yet they don't have, like, a true star. And that's what Tyron Matthew was when he was with the Chiefs, you know, at his prime. Yeah. He was just someone who could, you know, make a play, someone who could read the quarterback's eyes and, and sort of anticipate where the ball was going. Um, you don't really see that from the Chiefs secondary, but the thing I think most Chiefs fans appreciate about this group so far is that you're going to have to march down the field. You know, the Jaguars had a 19-play drive, Fernando. 19 plays oh, wow. didn't score a touchdown. So you keep everything in front. You force the issue in the red zone, and if you execute in the red zone, you force the other team to kick a field goal. And yeah. the Chiefs will do that all the time. You're like, hey, we'll trade your seven or our seven for your three. Like, you want you want to kick field goals? Great. You know, the Jacksonville Jaguars wanted to kick four field goals in the game at, at one point in time, and the Chiefs were just more than happy to to let that happen. So, um, I haven't heard that Spags every year. It's like you hear, oh, Spags needs to get fired. This year, haven't heard it. I, I, that's why mm -hmm. I feel like they've done a pretty good job this year in controlling. Yeah. Uh, the opposing team, so that's been that's been yeah. good because I mean, Spags is a good he's a good defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. and he's all about you know blitzing and um, yeah. having exotic you know fronts where it's like hey, there's four guys rushing on this side and there's only one guy over here, and you know how do you block <laughs> that accordingly? Um, you know, and so I think they are a very good defense in terms of tackling. 
I think last year some people were questioning Spagnuolo because he was blitzing yeah. too much. Well, this time when he blitzes, at least there's someone behind the blitz to make a quality tackle. There hasn't been many games this year where I've looked up and been like, man, like all of a sudden that is a 20 yard game because two guys miss tackles. You know, it's always it's always a challenge when you face Derrick Henry because uh, he can break yeah. anybody's tackles. But exactly. outside of him, you know, outside of him, they haven't had that really that issue. And he, they cleaned that up in the second half to win that game, too. Like the Derrick Henry didn't get 200 yards like he did against the Houston Texans. So yep. um Spagnuolo deserves a lot of praise this year because there are so many rookies. Jalen Watson, Trent McDuffie, who we talked about earlier, Joshua Williams. These are all guys in the secondary playing cornerback. Um, you know, and obviously you have Nick Bolton, the second year player, sort of controlling the entire defense in the middle. So they have a young rookie in George Karloftis, who's a defensive end. Uh, he's been serviceable, but Spagnuolo had an issue of, you know, not being willing to coach and play younger guys. And then the chiefs were like, well, what if, what if we draft like six rookies and, and they all play? <laughs> like, can you coach them up? <laughs> and, and, exactly. and so far, so far he's coached them up pretty well. That's all. Well, Nate, uh, last question from me. Uh, who you got this weekend? In terms of who's going to win? Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's, that's a real, that's, that's awesome. I would have a better, I will have a better idea Friday when we know who is a. Ah, you're going to pull a Brandon. A you're going to pull a Brandon Staley on me, I guess. I really, I really <laughs> want to. Um, you would think it's the tough Chiefs because I don't know who's that. playing. Yeah, I don't know who's yeah. having. I don't know who's playing receiver for the Chiefs. Um, well, we don't know who's going to play receiver for the Chargers, Chargers either. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I, who's who? Like, if if the Chargers win. I will agree. It will make it, it'll be a more exciting result um, if the Chargers win, just because, yeah, then the race is on. It is close. You know, the Chiefs would have three losses by then. The Chargers still only have four. Um, they and would it not, kind of feels like split. the Chiefs always need a loss right around this time to kind of get them going before the playoffs start. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's no, that's usually how I've seen them. Like, I remember yeah. before that Mexico City game. They took a loss yeah. right before that Mexico City game against the Chargers, and that kind of got them jump started into the Mexico yep. City game, and then the rest of the season into the Super Bowl. And they never, they never lost another game that year. Yep, I, I that, that is so true. That is so true. So look, um, Brendan Staley, let, like, let's see it, man. Um, Joe Lombardi, like, I, I just, I really want to see something creative, and yeah. say how was, what, how can we get to thirty points? No matter how we do it, you know, I I, I applaud Jacksonville last year, uh, last week. You know, Jacksonville started the game with an onside kick that they recovered. Yeah, you, you you're probably yeah. not going to surprise the Chiefs in that manner. But the Jags were like, "What if we just steal a possession?" And they did. Problem is, they yeah. they they only they only scored 17 points, Fernando. <laughs> so like, be daring, be bold. Yeah. But but score thirty. <laughs> so I'm like go. we're asking, you we're, asking we're asking both. <laughs> if the Chargers score thirty, I think they win. I really do. Um, because the Chiefs just haven't given that many points up um, in a while. And in a rivalry game, in a divisional game, if you want any chance of like you know winning the AFC West, you need you need to, in my opinion, you need to score thirty, get a couple turnovers, and win the game. You you did it last year in week two. There's no reason to think you can't do it again um but you need 30 because Mahomes is going to he's gonna have a couple plays that is going to if you're Chargers fans but he does that every week guys he he, he literally does that every week exactly well Nate thank you so much for taking time to uh to talk to us and everything I know you you're a busy guy but I appreciate it so much can't wait to see you on Sunday so we can say yeah well I haven't seen you since the combine so it's been uh Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit, but I appreciate you so much again. And guys, don't forget to go check out his work at By Nate Taylor on Twitter, right? Yes, sir. I think I got it right. Ah, I got it right. There you You go. Go check out his (laughs) great work. Go check out his stuff. It's amazing. Uh, Thank you again, Nate, so much for for joining What's Up Bolts. Dan, great conversation. Obviously, on a Wednesday night slash Thursday evening or morning, it's it's tough to know. Uh, <clears throat> it's tough to guess who's going to win between the Chargers and the Chiefs. I still have to ask him, but uh, but a lot is going to depend on Friday. The Chargers have two receivers that 
um, obviously are um, are going to come back in a little bit. And then you have uh, and then you have um, you don't know if the Chiefs guys are going to come back. Uh, they, they both have receivers that are down, but who's going to come back? That's going to make all the difference this week. Um, so yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens this weekend, but, um, but Dan real quick, um, obviously <coughs> the chargers have made some moves on the defensive line this week. Uh, yeah. they added, um, they added some guy. they added, um, hold on, let me get his name. They added, uh, yeah, Tyler Davison. Um, and they asked, uh, Brandon Saley today, Oh, what made you, um, go with him? And he's like, oh, he was in New Orleans at Allen and Cleveland. Joe Lombardi and offensive line coach Brandon Nugent were with him. They're familiar with him. Uh, outside linebackers coach Griff Smith and um, Jay Rogers. Uh, they're familiar with his game, and he's been at other places. So, um, so they liked him. They thought he could really help this week. And uh, and obviously today, Brandon was asked, hey, uh, or on Wednesday, Brandon was asked. Brandon, when you guys are going to be going up against the a Chiefs team with kind of a, not a depleted defensive line because they should be getting some pieces back. Chris Rump might come back this weekend. They have some other guys, but um, but I mean, obviously Austin Johnson's done for the year. Uh, Christian Covington and uh, and uh, um, Otito is also out for the year. Uh, Ogbanya. So uh, those guys are gonna those guys are out for the year. So how do they expect to attack the Chiefs? Uh, this weekend, especially with um, with those guys missing, and this was uh, this is what Brandon had to say um, about about how they expect to go at Kansas City. Yeah, the Chiefs have one of the top offenses in the league, Lindsay. Um, have for a long time, and uh, you know, they're, this year is no exception. They've added some new players and uh, really brought them into that offense beautifully, and they're they're playing at a high level. And they're very dangerous because they can beat you a lot of different ways with a lot of different people. And um, and at the center of it all is, is, is Pat, you know, running the show. And um, they also have an outstanding offensive line. And I think that's the group that doesn't get um, nearly as much credit as it should on their team because you're so aware of their skill players and, and the production. Um, but that output is, is you know, in large part uh, because their offensive line plays at a high level together. And they can Shout out. Shout out to Coach Staley for recognizing who are the real men on these football teams and the freaking hard hatters who punch in, don't bitch about nothing, and get to work. So right now they have uh, Davison. They have the Morgan Fox. They have Sebastian Joseph Day and Braden Fayoko. I'm sure they're probably going to add a fifth guy, maybe the guy that they signed today, David Moa from San Diego. He went to Kearney High School. Um, oh, God. <laughs> They'll bring him up on uh, on Sunday, um, but I'm sure they're gonna want to have a five guy rotation. I'm sure they're gonna re rotate. Oh no, Joe Gaziano is supposed to. Joe Gaziano is on the roster as well, so uh, so they're gonna. Um, so they're probably gonna have those five guys. Maybe they do move David uh, Moa up to. Um, I know they send him in the practice squad, but maybe they want to have six this weekend, especially with. Um, you, know, too, you, yeah. you can't blitz Kansas City. You're gonna have to attack them in a different way you're gonna have to yeah. uh, hopefully you can get four on them and be able to get pressure with four especially with khalil mack especially with kyle van noy yeah. um even derwin james down there uh at pass rusher hey jerry atouchu i was getting some pressure against uh yeah. San, san francisco. francisco i know he only played a couple of uh snaps but that that would be very interesting but um but what i mean what, how do you obviously you're looking at the stats, right? I mean, I mean, looking at the stats and Patrick Mahomes is having another MVP level season. I think he, right now he would be the MVP. Um, Good. You know what that means? 20. They don't you want know what that means? Ball. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Fine. Uh, what about the oh, I'm sorry. I haven't called them Hilberto's chiefs yet. Yeah, exactly. You have to, he's going to have uh, his pom poms out. He's going to have a red <laughs> tie on Sunday when he's at the Rams game, wherever they are. New he's going to have his, Red tie out in New Orleans. He's gonna be wearing red all weekend. He's gonna be like, uh, "You get eat." Oh, never mind. I shouldn't do that. I was gonna do the tomahawk chant. Never mind. Yeah. So obviously he's gonna be in the press box. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> obviously this is gonna be a this is gonna be a big game. But Patrick Mahomes playing at a high level. It's funny because I told Nate in the thing that I, I was very surprised because in years past. And I know people will be like, oh, that's unfair criticism or whatever. There were times where I think Patrick is so comfortable with 
uh, with uh, Tyree Kill. And he's, by the way, he is still answering questions about the Tyree Kill trade. I was listening to his press conference today. Oh, really? I'm like, you guys are still, at, like, some people are still asking him about the Tyree Kill trade. I'm like, dang, dude, that must uh, that must kind of suck having to hear. I mean, it's kind of like Justin and all these guys having to uh, hear about. Well, no, because they're not even on the team anymore. I was gonna say maybe it's like it's like these guys hearing about Keen Allen's out, Mike's out. What are you guys gonna do? Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, 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 these guys yeah. are still on the team. Like Tyreek is good. Honestly, though, honestly, though, if I was in Mahomes' position, I would kind of be like. I should have, you know, not got, gotten paid as much as I did and give a little no, bit of that. I mean, I, we don't know yet, though. We don't know how successful they're going to be. Who knows? Maybe the Chiefs go all the way to the Super Bowl and they win it. And uh, Miami. Don't start and, putting and, that type of maneuver in the universe. No, but I'm just saying, like, Mahomes is playing really well this year. He doesn't have him. And the thing that I think Mahomes has really learned, because, I mean, they asked him today and he's like, I, he's like, he said he's felt like he's exceeded his expectations. He's like, if you would have told me coming into my uh, rookie year, do you feel like you're going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL? Basically said, yeah. I mean, and you're supposed to think like that. You have to. Yeah, you have to. He's like, there's so, still some things I need to work on. And I feel like one of the things he's worked on is that he was so Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill dependent that he knew closing his eyes, he could throw them the ball and get it to them. Now, <laughs> no, and that's not a knock. I'm saying, but like, this is what I'm saying. But his issue was he couldn't get it to Nic Nic Nicole, Nicole Hartman. He couldn't get it to the other guys like that. It cost yeah. him. Sometimes they would they would he, he would throw it and it'd be over or it'd be under or uh, he didn't have that chemistry. Um, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he's developed that chemistry. He's throwing passes to Juju Smith Schuster that only Juju can catch. He's throwing passes to other guys that only they can catch. So uh, that's really where I feel like he's taking his game to the next level. And that's really impressed me about him. Uh, obviously, you're making fun of me, but I just think it's it's recognizable, and that's the thing that impressed me about uh, his game this year. But um, but I do I will say this: the Chargers usually play him well. Um, yep. The uh, these games usually come down to the final uh, the final uh, snap. Yeah. Um. So. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough game. It's gonna be difficult. It is. But I really think that Patrick's taking his game to the next level. Now, I don't know. I mean, what I mean, what do you really what do you think? I mean, I I have to get your opinion on it. I, I think I honestly think that he's uh he's actually kind of taking that next uh level this year. Well, I mean, everyone always kills me, but I always say the same thing. He came into a winning situation with a Hall of Fame offensive court, offensive mind head coach, where the pressure's never really been on him because he's had great scheming. He's always had good running backs. He's had solid receivers his whole time there. He's always had Andy Reid to try and change things up. A lot of people forget this, but, like, some of those shovel passes, those routes, those moving stuff, like, Andy Reid was a big-time innovator, like, like it or not. He was a huge innovator yeah, with the Eagles, Matt Nagy when he was first there and all that stuff. So, you know – of course he's good. I think he's good. I give him his credit. Is he the best? Is he the goat? Psych. No, he's not. No, I'm I not saying think. he's a – no, I'm, no, 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 I'm, not, I'm, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking no, about I you. I, I just know, hate the way they always paint him as no, like the I know, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about us. Like I'm saying I feel like he – like you have to give him credit for like what he really has. Yeah, he's he has played well. Next, that next step. I, yeah. I mean besides me being a hater, and I admit it, hey, shout out, special alert. I'm a hater. You know, it's funny. Uh, he gave your quarterback credit today. He's like, there's sometimes – he's like, we play a lot of the same teams. I'm watching film, and I'm like, gosh, dong, gosh, dong, dang it, or something like that. He's gosh, like, how he make that? he's like, how does he make that throw? He's like, there's oh. throws that I'm even impressed with the throws that he makes. And yeah. and he's like, that's the thing about both of us. He's like, we both make throws that uh, not a lot of people, if any, on this earth can make. So, um, so some of his throws impress him, impress me. So I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, no, but yeah, but no. though, he has played well this year. I thought, seriously, besides me being a hater, I thought they were going to take a little bit bigger of a dip, but they yeah. haven't. So, I mean, kudos to Andy Reid, having them ready to go and everything else. And 100%. so it is what it is. No, and I mean, usually play. by this time, everybody's trying to fire Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator, yeah. and they <laughs> and they haven't. Why? It's been like three or four years been, in a row. Yeah, they're playing. They're playing so well right now that you're like, okay, yeah, there, there's no way. But one matchup that I'm very excited about this weekend is Godzilla versus King Kong. Why do I say that? Because this weekend we get Derwin James against Travis Kelsey again. 
And to me, that's that's honestly one of the best matchups uh, that you'll see in football. One hundred percent. That's one of 100%. the best. And here's what Brandon Saley had to say about uh, about the matchup. Yeah, those are two of the best in the game. Those are two first team All Pro players. You know, Travis is one of the elite players in the history of the game. He's on a you know historic player. Uh, we have full respect for him as a competitor, and. You know, that's what that's what makes the game what it is, is seeing the very best go head to head. And I know the respect they have for one another. And that's also uh, something that you appreciate is that there's the real respect from two of the, you know, the Titans in the league. When you watch those two go at it, it's just oh, uh, yeah. they really are two of the best. And, and really, when I was talking to Nate about it, <clears throat> I told him Derwin James is a linebacker with the instincts of a corner no and uh, yeah with the instincts of a corner and the vision of a safety so he's in yep. a linebacker body he has the instincts of a corner and he has the body of a safety so the guy's just phenomenal oh, oh, so and uh real quick just real quick before we uh, jump ahead this is what brandon had to say about uh is it the scheme or is it uh uh is it uh derwin that makes all these plays happen. So here's uh here's what Brandon had to say. I mean, I give, you know, Derwin deserves the credit for, for playing. Um, <laughs> credit deserves to these players uh, when they perform well. Um, but, you know, they're, they're both, I think in studying their, their uh, games against one another, even long before I got there, you just know that when you play, when two great players are playing against each other, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And that's how it is with both those guys. But it's just the level of play is so high between those two guys and what they do for their teams. And that's what you appreciate is that, um, you know, both of them play at such a high level. And um, hopefully it'll be another show for people on Sunday. And the body slam that will live forever, dude. I hope there's a part two. I hope he body slams his ass again. <laughs> Well, we'll see. And Travis was all, uh was a good sport about it after, so that was pretty funny. Yeah, about like, it. look, he's but, arrogant, but he's not a total scumbag. Especially like I kind no, of like him on his podcast with his brother. Yeah, I know school. him and his brother just seem like they're two down to earth guys yeah. on the field. Obviously, Travis is going to be who he is on the field. Yeah, because he has to. He has passion to. that comes out, and yeah. and every team needs somebody like that. A team yeah. needs a passionate guy like him, and yeah. they have it in him. I think the Charger. I would say Derwin James is that passionate guy that. Yeah. Uh, that gets up and he's like, "Come on, guys, let's go! Come on, let's get." Because look, I don't even think I don't think even Pat's probably that bad of a guy, but you maybe a little bit arrogant on the field. But I mean, you got to play to it if that helps you out. I just hate his wife and his brother, so that's why I hate him, especially. especially oh, by the way, uh, Jack, Jackson's people hit uh, hit us up, and he wants to do a TikTok with you before the game. Get the hell out of here! I hope he does. No, never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, you trying uh, to get incriminate myself, Ron? And now go Chargers, go! God, I hope so. so get, the, get the Terminator down there and take out somebody. Uh, so yeah, so let's just uh, move it along right here. And uh, yep. Dan, give me a fantasy player to watch. I think the one that's going to be to watch uh, is uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire in or no? He's in. You think he's the number one? I don't know. They've really been using the other rotating, well, right? Yeah, he fumbled last weekend, so oh, like they're gonna rotate uh, Pacheco or whatever. So yeah. I think Clyde Edwards will probably get more of the carries this weekend. He did well against the Chargers last time that they played. So and I was gonna say, I was gonna say probably either him or Tony. Since probably double Travis. So, so you're gonna go Tony? Yeah, I'll go with Tony. Yeah. Tony he's probably touchdown. gonna have who do you, who do you think first touchdown. Yeah, he'll probably have uh probably Mike because of the speed. No, yeah, probably most likely. Uh, I mean, Mike, I'm gonna go, Mike sometimes his techniques off and gives up plays. So I'm gonna go Austin Eckler. I think Austin Eckler is gonna have there a big go. game. I think the Chargers are gonna need to run the football. I think they're gonna need a. I, need, I think they're gonna need a hat trick. To, uh, a hat trick and touchdowns from Austin Eckler. That's what Nate said. You're going to need to score points against the Chiefs. If you can score 30 or more, which has been hard for the Chargers this year, yeah, surprisingly, yeah. it's because of all the injuries. But if Gerald Everett, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams play this weekend, then you should be able to get 30 points uh, out of this team. Uh, so it'll. I, I think Austin Eckler is going to have a hat trick this weekend, uh, and I think he'll, uh, he'll do well. Uh, Dan, give me your X factor. 
that was different from last week, or can I pick the same one? You can pick the same one if you'd like. No, that's fine. I'll pick someone else. You know who I'm going to go with? I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with uh, Chargers defensive line. There's a lot of rotations coming in, guys who are new and all that stuff. Because in my mind, the way to beat Patrick Mahomes is to keep him in the pocket. You cannot let him escape. And when you get a chance at him, you have got to make him pay. I mean, I'm not going to say anything dirty, but I mean, in the first quarter, you want to take a 15 yard or take a 15 yard. It's no big deal. But you have got you have got to control the line of scrimmage in the run game because they are going to try. I think this is probably the game you'll probably see the Chiefs run the most. I wouldn't really pass it if I was them. But uh you have got to control the line of scrimmage on the run game. And if it gets in the pass game, you have got to keep Patrick Mahomes in the pocket. And when you get a shot, you got to take it. Um, okay. I'm going to go with X Factor, X Factor, X Factor. I'm going to go with Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray. I'm going to go with both of them. They're going to need to play well this game. They can't, they can't have uh, Drew, Kenneth Murray can't miss tackles. He can't. Uh, he has to be very sound in his tackling. Drew Tranquil actually does pretty well against the Chiefs. He's, he's had a he's had oh. sacks here. Uh, he's been pretty good this year as well. I think Drew's played. He's he's having his best year as a pro this year. Oh, one hundred percent. I think if Drew keeps on going, um, he could have a pretty good or he could finish it off and have a strong season for the Chargers. But I believe, and I think he's a free agent after this year. So, uh, so that'll be interesting to see. But yeah. uh, but I think Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray are going to need to have a strong game if the Chargers are going to win this game. Uh, Dan, prediction. I hate to say it. I never want to admit this. Chiefs are probably going to win. Uh, the only reason if – if the, the problem is it's a huge if. If Keenan and Mike play, I think the Chargers uh, might be able to win this game. But until they can beat Kansas City – how do I want to say this? I haven't seen yeah. them. They haven't beaten a winning team this year so far. They haven't yeah. beaten a winning team. So they until lost, they can do that. They've lost I mean, uh, already three Super Bowl winning head coaches. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm going to have to go uh, Chiefs 34, 33. I'll go Chargers 28. But I just I, I, I need to see one. I need to see one game where they can beat a, a, a better opponent, an opponent with a winning record. This has to be the game. If not, you're going to have a difficult time in the back end of this season. So the Chargers really need this one. They won't say it, but I think they really need this game. Um, they do, because if you lose, you not only fall two behind the Chiefs games, I think, you also fall two in the division. Yeah, so you'd be you'd be two and two in yeah, the they're division. they're two and one right now. Yeah, you'd be two and two. two. And they're three and L, I think, right, if they win? Yeah, they haven't played. They haven't played either Denver team. They played both of them. Uh, they played Denver twice against the Raiders. <laughs> they played the Raiders once and they beat them by one point. Remember, uh, Josh McDaniels tried to go for it on, or yeah. he he tried to go for it on uh, what's it called on the ed- conversion and he missed. Damn, what an idiot! Yep, but <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of What's bolt again it will be a sunday night football game but dan and i will have something for you guys after the game uh don't forget to check out all uh my tweets at real left ramirez i'll be having updates for you on friday about who's gonna play who's in who's not uh don't forget to check out combat compass don't forget to check out regular compass on the beat don't forget to check out house of horns and see what uh gill's got cooking up on the ram side of things uh and pick the producer and then obviously, um, He's don't cooking forget with wood, Frau. He's cooking with wood. That team sucks. Don't forget to check out our new show, Com- uh, Compass FC. It will be dropping on Thursday. We will be dropping the first, the inaugural episode of it. Go, don't forget to check it out. Let's it's, all, go. it's all World Cup. Uh, we will be doing some World Cup stuff this uh, this year. And if you guys like it, like it, com- uh, comment, be a friend, tell a friend. And if you guys really like it, we may continue it next year with. Uh, with um Champions. during Champions League and during La Liga and the EPL and all that stuff. So please be uh sure to let us Bundesliga. know if you guys like it. Huh? Bundesliga. Yeah, exactly. So we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us and uh have fun this weekend. We're getting closer to the holidays. So uh definitely an exciting time. I know Christmas music uh, in Alberto's house is about to start playing after Thanksgiving. So that'll be a That'll be a fun time. But thank you guys so much. I'm Fernando Ramirez. That is Dan and Dago. 
We thank you guys so much. Stay safe. Have fun. And don't forget, be a friend, tell a friend. Here's what happens if you don't watch. Oh, dang.